So today we have a panel here for you. We're here to discuss collaboration in action. And we've got four customers, real Cisco customers, who have all got working collaboration systems in their organizations today. And we're just going to talk through some of the points that they've got to make about collaboration within their business environments. So I'm going to invite each of you to just introduce yourselves. We've got here Franz, Jens, Tim, and Daniel. Over to you. Okay, thank you. My name is Franz Hillebrand from the Signa Group. Who is Signa? Signa is a company based in Vienna, and we are across the German-speaking area in Europe. Uh, Signa has two parts of his business. One part is the real estate business. We are owner of uh, asset value about 10 billion in um, very quality, high-level assets in, in Germany, in Austria, in it, Italy. And we have about 5 billion in development. So we not only own buildings, we develop buildings, build buildings, and all this stuff. Um, the Signal Real Estate Group has four parts. This luxury hotels, we are the owner of the Park Hyatt in Vienna. We are the owner of the Charlie Anne in, in Lech. It's a very beautiful site in Lech for skiing. Um, we have the Prime Selection. This is a real estate portfolio for long-term assets in Germany, in Austria, and Italy. We have the development with projects in Austria and Germany at the moment. And we have the Signa Funds. It's an enclosed real estate fund for investors like Allianz and other parts. The second thing is Signa Retail. We are the owner of Karstadt in Germany. Um, we have there the premium group, there's the Kaufhaus des Westens, the KDW in Berlin. We have the sports group, this is all our sports uh, shops across Germany. Uh, we have some internet stores with Fahrrad.de or Pro Bike Shop or Outfitter. And we are the owner of Dress for Less, may you know it. Then we have Signa department stores, these are the car start uh, departments in Germany. We have 79 from that. So that's Signa. My role in Signa is I'm the CEO. I'm responsible for the real estate part and I'm responsible for some parts of the retail business. Thank you. And Jens? So yeah, my name is uh, Jens. I'm a, a senior project manager at the company called Wacker Chemie, Wacker Chemie Germany. It's a German-based um, chemical um, production company. And um, uh, yeah, we build mainly um, chemical products uh, for, for um, other industries, so basic chemical products. And um, uh, yeah, we are, uh, as I mentioned, a German-based um, company, but we have um, uh, worldwide sites, around about 70 sites worldwide, globally deployed. Thank you, Tim. Hi there. Um, yes, uh, Tim Browning. I'm the IT Operations Director at Radius Payment Solutions. Radius Payment Solutions provide products and services to the fleet industry. Our core product is fuel cards, um, and we also have a, a telematics device called Kinesis. Um, we have offices across the globe, um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you. And finally, Daniel. Hi, everyone. My name's Daniel Cook. Um, I'm the IT Network Manager at a company called Turning Point. We provide um, health and social care services in the UK. We operate out around about 100 300 sites uh, throughout the UK. Thank you. As it's a complete happy accident that we have two German customers and two UK customers, but I promise we'll keep it very friendly. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with the first question and talk about workplace transformation. So it's a real buzz phrase at the moment. We're all hearing it. And so my first question is about the workplace transformation trends you're seeing in your organizations, how they're affecting your business model, and also the kind of the, the biggest challenges that it's posing to you that you see in the next two to three years? Okay, I start again. So what's the business transformation? We started with a BBX in years ago and then make the transformation to voice over IP, then uh, video conferencing systems, WebEx, Java, all the stuff you can see here on this exhibition. Um, then we have a missing link with this thing with WhatsApp. Yeah? Everyone was using WhatsApp. We have Java for the iPhone, but nothing to compare. And then Cisco launched Spark. So Spark was for us the missing link in this collaboration world. Um, and now in, in, in this year, we have changed the whole communication, the Signal Group. Yeah? 
everyone is using voice over IP with video. Everyone is using a video conferencing system normally. And Spark is the next step that we use in Signa. Yeah? With the Spark board, it's, it was an, an, this enabling tool in Signa that we can bring Spark away from a, just another chat tool like WhatsApp. We bring it to a collaboration tool. Yeah? Now we can use Spark with our video conferencing system. We use it with the Spark board. We use it on your iPhones, iPads, and so on. So this is for a success story. Yeah? So you have the full end-to-end -end collaboration right. in one platform. Right. Thank you. So Tim, I'll move on to you because you've got a slightly different section of our collaboration portfolio, bringing together UC and also Contact Center. Yeah, so we've deployed a, a contact centre and telephony solution uh, across the group, which started in November 2016. It's still in, in progress at the moment, but we've got a, a couple of sites left to go. Um, it's, we've got over a 1,000 staff, so most of those staff, it's been a, a Jabba-based deployment, and then for our contact centre areas of the, the business, we use Cisco for Ness. So keeping everyone connected and also enhancing your customer experience, which yeah, is it, transforming it, across the business. Exactly. In, in answer to the, the, the first question of this panel, you know, our, our biggest challenges are, are really, well, there's two. There's one which is um, focused on recruitment, retention of staff, and what we're finding with millennials and Generation X, technology is very much a, um, a must-have now, it's no longer a differentiator, it, it is a must-have and in order to attract the right talent, you know, and the right workforce of, of that, that sort of, from those generations, we really need to have the, the leading edge technology in place in order to, like I said, attract the right talent. And then the other side of the, 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 the story is the, the customer story, of course, and customers are becoming more and more demanding, in a good way, of course, and um, we're really seeing a, a big demand for that omni-channel approach and just multiple communications channels. I can see you're nodding there, Daniel. So do you want to add to that with how Turning Point's using collaboration? Yeah. I mean, uh, in answer to your first question, our biggest challenge today is getting more out of the technology, invest, maximizing the investments and getting the most out of our, our people, resources on our technology. Um, so the technology, obviously, being a national-based company, allows us to remove those geographical boundaries. Um, so we've deployed instant messaging presence, um, Jabba, so we've got full mobility. People can collaborate effectively um, anytime, anywhere. Fantastic. And Jens? <coughs> yeah, we did um, a similar journey than uh, um, Signa did. So we started 50 years ago with, with just phone services. And uh, meanwhile, we are talking about uh, the full collaboration um, uh, suite of Cisco. And we are also now facing a topic of uh, how um, can Spark um, bring a benefit to our business. And um, yeah, I, I see two main um, challenges. Um, because in these days, we are talking about uh, the digital workplace. But um, nobody really knows how the digital, digital workplace should look like. So nobody really can read the glass ball and can look into the future. We all have guesses what it should be, but nobody really knows it. And so um, this means uh, for us um, two, two key points. Uh, we have to be more flexible regarding this, this stuff. Yeah? If we deploy uh, tools who we think they support the digital workplace, uh, it can change. It can change within one year. And, and we have to be more flexible and um, we, we, we have to be faster than in the past. So we can't do any more a rollout, with a global rollout which takes uh, two or three years of a tool then the, the needs of this tool might gone. And uh, yeah, the, the second big thing I see, we had this also this morning in discussion, um, the technology becomes more and more complex, but the user interface has to be more and more simple. And the gap in between will become wider. And it's, it's yeah, maybe our main topic, we are, all we are here in this Cisco Live, to, to handle this gap between the uh, complex uh, technologies and the and the user interfaces, the simple stuff, easy to use stuff. So I think with what we've heard there is very common themes that we hear from many of our customers who are deploying collaboration solutions in their organization to help solve business agility, all-in-one solution, so a simple seamless interface that you can have, customer experience, very important, but also unified communication so we can bring everybody together, attracting and retaining top talent, that's another really big theme for many organizations. 
So secondly, I'd like to talk to you about your specific business case and, the, and that led to your own project and what role the collaboration technology plays in helping you to solve the challenges and then how is it continuing to drive your business forward and how will it, you know, how do you see that, how that changing? Start again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the real estate business is a network business. So we have the demand that we must share documents, presentations across every device and across the world. So 80% of our workforce is mobile. So they're on the construction side, they're on the meeting side, they're at the customers and so on. So we need all data, all our communication features mobile. Um, we use GSM, we use voice over IP, we use our video conferencing system. You, we use in the hotel our Java client on the laptop to make video conferencing. And since one year, we use uh, the Spark client too. Um, for, our, for us, it's very important. Every time we need it, anywhere, anytime, and not on any device. And with this uh, solution that we have now in place, we are able to do this. For some key facts, we have in Signa about 90 video conferencing endpoints, starting from DX10 up to MX700 uh, and S680. So we use this really very, very often in the Signa. Thank you. Daniel. Um, hello. So for us, I guess there's a number of use cases, but I think one that stands out, first springs to mind is because we're a national organization um, and we, 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 our contracts are commissioned in, with a very short lead time, so we need the ability to be able to provision telephony services, voice and video, very quickly. And with the call manager, we can do that. Uh, we've got centralized uh, SIP bearers. So with that technology, it removes the reliance on you know, legacy ISDN technology and PBXs, which are, are very cumbersome and very costly to maintain. Um, that's as a start. And Tim, so your specific project, yes. you had two really, didn't you? Because you had to unify the communications and then you had the contact center side. Exactly, but we did treat that all as one project, one implementation across the group. But you know, our, our main um, business case justification revolved around a, a very aging infrastructure that we had in place. And not only that, the way in which the group's grown, there's been a lot of mergers, a lot of acquisitions. And sort of around 2012 onwards, that, that sort of resulted in a lot of disparate technologies, disparate systems, all, all geographically dispersed. And we recognized that there was significant opportunity to uh, improve the technology in use across the business, um, bring that all together into one group-wide system, which would then also, as I alluded to in, in the first question, uh, overall improve the, the customer experience too. So there was a lot of you know, opportunity there to make some really good changes in order to improve that experience. And Jens at Backer, I think you've got your project, you know, your kind of phase one and then it's ongoing really. So um, you can talk yeah, a little about that. Yeah, both. So the, our business case was that we have to build uh, global teams. Yeah, we have several business divisions and we, they, uh, in the past, they communicate uh, our, with uh, scheduled meetings once a week, something like that. And um, yeah, they are, we have to support them to, to uh, get a higher level of communication on a daily basis. And um, uh, what we did, we rolled out uh, at, in, the, in this special case um, uh, the, the Cisco Chopper tool. And now we are talking about Spark, but we, we rolled out Chopper already. And um, the key point, what we saw is, yeah, we, we gave Chopper to everyone and said, yeah, it's a nice tool, use it, be happy. And uh, a few months later, we, we checked the usage, and we only saw that uh, 30 to 35 percent are really using this tool. So we, we didn't reach our internal customers with that. And that's um, why we came to the point where we um, need an additional user adoption program. So when we do the next rollout, especially now with Spark, we have uh, to get our users on the hand right from the beginning and to not only the technical rollout, also again, and user adoption to, to take the user right from the beginning to this journey and tell them how it um, can engage his daily work, so this new tool. And has that usage gone up and are your users happy? <laughs> Partly. We are on the way. 
it's good to hear. I think it's a really important point, actually, with any collaboration deployment. You know, you could get everything perfectly right, right up until the point that you've got it up and running for everybody. But if you don't then have your users there using it, you know, part of your collaboration deployment always needs to be your user and adoption strategy that you have um, once deployed very quickly after those first endpoints or, or soft clients are on your, on your technology endpoints. So as we hit, sit, sit here at Cisco Live today, obviously this is the why Cisco question. Um, I just wondered what you were looking for in a technology partner and how has Cisco collaboration technology enabled you to transform the business you're working in? Is it working differently and has it actually been a real game changer for you? I'll uh, start with Tim. Go on then. Yes, yeah, so we were looking for a, a world-class supplier, vendor and a world-class partner. Um, we, we partnered um, with Natilic as well, um, uh, and that was upon Cisco's recommendation. We had a good relationship with our Cisco account manager, and it was a, a conversation of the nature of who, who can we work with in the UK, who, who's your platinum partner, and so on. And from that point forward, it was a really strong relationship formed with, with Cisco. Um, in, in, chain, in terms of the, the game-changing side of things, I, I guess one of the biggest things for us has been the, the move away from uh, as I mentioned before, an aging infrastructure, but desk phones. Uh, and we've gone to a complete soft phone based deployment as well. And, you know, we work very closely with both Cisco and Natilic to plan all of that. There was a, a huge sort of cultural change for the business there as well. But it's been seen in a, a really positive light. We have a lot of, um, we do a lot of work with the big oil co's, so BP, Shell, and so on. We have a lot of, you know, people come and visit the office. And normally the first thing they always mention is, wow, you've gone completely soft phone. So, yeah. Jens? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we did already a long journey together with Cisco. We are um, yeah, Cisco customers since 2003, which we implemented uh, on our first sites, IP telephony. And we did a lot of up and downs, yeah, which my, my everyone who uses IP telephony right from the beginning, I think. And um, yeah, so therefore, and um, another point is uh, that Cisco, of course, has a wide um, band of uh, tools and collaboration services and functionalities which helps us and um, but Cisco is yeah, but also is uh, a good thing because Cisco also lives this um, uh, partner network yeah when you when you um, looking for an implementer of course you need a, a, a partner from Cisco who is implementing the stuff and uh, so therefore Cisco is not alone also the partner network is is really good and we especially uh, we found a, a partner who, who does this journey with us rolling out the tool from a technical perspective and also supporting us on the user adoption side. It's, 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 it's right here. And so if you have any questions regarding Spark rollout combined with user adoption, you can ask uh, Claudia. He's <laughs> at the back. Sitting but over there in the corner. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is, this is um, really important that this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this partner integration works well on, with, with Cisco. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, actually. I've often heard said that nobody does partners quite like Cisco, and I think our model is very strong. We have, you know, partner summits similar to this one that we dedicate just to our partners. We run constant partner workshops, and we're, you know, speaking with our partners daily. So I do think it is a real strength, and I'm glad to hear, because, you know, both of you so far have mentioned your partners. Daniel? Yeah, a very similar kind of theme to, to these guys, really. But essentially, we were looking for a product that was mature, um, very stable, which obviously Cisco communications manager is. It's been around a long time. It's been a market leader. Um, but also we wanted something that was scalable. Um, you know, because we, as a business we're growing. We don't want to have to replace the system. Um, and also we wanted something, a solution that had that was all-encompassing. So with other vendors, you know, if you want a contact center, it has to be third partner. If you want a video conferencing system, it's a third partner solution again. So we, we didn't want that. We wanted single supplier, single SLAs, world-class support, and essentially that's, that's why we ended up choosing Cisco. Thank you. So hopefully you've seen the trust and transparency that we at Cisco hold as clear values. And finally, last now, last but not least. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same solution partner. We have the, the company called Drink. That's not only Claudia. Um, we changed the way in Signa for traveling, for working, for communication. It's this quite normal in Signa to see each other on the voice of IP phone. Why we choose Signa uh, Cisco years ago? Because it was not only the technology that we need, we need some devices 
that are okay for our business. We have a, a very high level business, so we need nice end devices on the desk, we need nice end devices on the meeting rooms, and with Microsoft you had this Polycom plastic uh, phone, may you know it, years ago, and with Cisco you have a state-of-the-art uh, Cisco phone, you have with the MX series a very pretty working fine uh, solution for the meeting rooms, this was one of the key facts that we have chosen Cisco for our partners in, in communication uh, things. With Java, with Spark, we have now a round solution for us. Yeah? And that's very important to you, as yeah. you mentioned. So next, I'd like to talk to you about your business success. Have you got any specific examples that you're comfortable to share with us of where you've seen specific business success as a result of the collaboration technology that you've deployed? Um, and any additional benefits? So things that you maybe didn't expect that have also improved in the organization as a, as a result. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, so at one specific case, I mean, there's, there's many benefits, but one specific case that has achieved a lot of success is uh, a telemedicine pilot. So we essentially we're putting DX uh, telepresence endpoints into our clinics um, and inviting service users or patients um, to come into a clinic and then be, be able to dial in to a remote expert. And that expert can be anywhere in the country. So we can really draw on that wealth of experience that we've got located around the business and remove those geographical boundaries. Yeah, I think I really like that example of telehealth because I think in the healthcare vertical specifically, it's something that I'm seeing more and more is, you know, the, this idea of connected health and remote video. It's not, it's not something that's unusual now. Many, many um, healthcare customers are, are quite used to it and actually enjoy it. And where I see it, I've, I've sort of heard that it really helps is in rural areas and smaller community hospitals where you don't necessarily have those expertise on site anymore, but people who are living in those areas can still have access to the latest and greatest healthcare. So it's really nice to hear that. Jens? Yeah, um, uh, it, we, we, we um, changed the way we do rollouts. So we, the, we, we face the, the, the topic that we, um, a special um, topic, we rolled out video systems um, to um, a specific uh, business division um, that they can have daily video conferencing. So we rolled out SX10s and DX80s. And the interesting thing was right at the beginning, it was the, the usual way we said, yeah, Maybe it helps you for your daily communication, collaboration. And the, the, the answer from the business was, do we really need that? Is it really helpful? I'm not sure. So I wasn't, wasn't sure about it. And then we, we took them um, and um, explained them how the things are working and uh, for, for what is useful and helped them to, to using it. And then the reaction was great. And then now they never will give away any video systems anymore. And we, we see similar things in Spark. Meanwhile, we see, um, uh, yeah, we, we do a Spark pilot currently, and it's a huge pilot currently because the business came to us and asked us if they can participate in this pilot because they see advantages for, for their daily business. It's really interesting. And so the, the IT business is changing from a, from a yeah, cost center in the past now to a solution provider, and we will, we will see like that now. And also, I think you had an example of team camaraderie as well in Spark that were, did you say that the, when we spoke earlier that the, your, the, the strengthening of your relationships and your teams through being able to interact through Spark has also been increased? Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. That um, go, goes along with this, with this topic. The business came to us and asked us uh, if they can participate in Spark because it improves the daily communication between the teams. Um, and I think bringing your teams together is crit critical across all of your organizations. Yeah. I think even more informal examples in Spark. So, you know, I, I have in my team, but also in other organizations that have Spark. So you might have a, a kind of like a water cooler room or a coffee break room where people go and they still interact and they talk with each other as a team and they find out other things about themselves, what they've done on the weekend or, you know, where they've been on holiday. And I think that's also important for bringing your teams together. It's not just about the work you're doing together, but it's about the people and, and strengthening those bonds as well through the collaboration technology. Um, Franz, I'll invite you next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what we have done in Signa was we, the same here. We don't bring out technology, we bring out use cases in Signa. 
So we think before we go out with these things, how should they use them? We identify that some people are overloaded with this uh, many systems that we have. We have video conferencing, we have voice over IP, we have WebEx, we have Java, we have Spark. What should I use for what? Yeah? This question has come very often for us. So we decided that we create different types of, of trainings and different types of user groups. So at the moment, we train the project leaders for the development projects for WebEx only 10 minutes. The assistant that uh, plan the meetings and schedule the meetings, there we bring a, a one hour uh, training to them. Um, the same on, on video conference systems. Yeah? We train the assistants longer than the managers they use them. Yeah? The manager should go, should go into the room and should press attend. This is one of the things. Then we get feedback after each rollout and we use this feedback. And we go to our partners and say, okay, what can we do? We have these problems, these problems, these problems. How can we achieve these problems to the, our uh, customers? Yeah, and we have a department, we have a, uh, two ladies for the trainings, and these two ladies are no, not technical guys. So we have two ladies in the IT department, they have studied uh, adult trainings, and these ladies go out to our customers and train them. And they use the same languages like the customer, and they do not use the technical language. These are the key factors in Signa, I think, that why we have 90 video conferencing system and why we have Spark in place. So really, in just empowering your users to give them confidence. And I think if you've got confident users with collaboration technology, then you know, it becomes second nature to them and they use it yeah. day to day in their lives, which is great for your business, connecting people, and also for your investment <laughs> as well. <laughs> right. Tim. Yeah, sure. So there's three main areas which are, are focused on in, in my answer. One is that the, the technology has enabled the migration from ISDN to SIP. And as, as I'm sure everyone knows, ISDN's been phased out going in end of life 2025. Um, but because, <coughs> because of the, the impact it would have on our business if we were to lose that telephony functionality, you know, there was low appetite for risk at first, obviously from senior stakeholders with that with the implementation of the new Cisco system. So it was seen as a, a phased approach. We'd get the new system in, then we'd do the migration to SIP. Um, after the first couple of offices, we did actually say, look, we're, we're quite confident now. We, we, we know the process. As I've mentioned, we work closely with our partner on it as well, and we upskilled appropriately within the team. But the team very quickly got to grips with all of the steps that were needed. And now each time we do an office migration, we do the, the Cisco implementation on the day of the, the port date from, from ISDN to SIP. So it's an entire process that takes place during working hours as well. Um, but actual disruption, impact to the business, it is minimal. So the, the technology has enabled us to do that. The other area I wanted to focus on was the open API nature of the technology. That was a real attraction to us because we do do a, a lot of our own software development, both for internal systems and customer facing systems. And whole open API approach that Cisco take has allowed us to you know, get our developers to start planning on how we, for example, identify the, the, the number of customers calling in on so that our CRM system will then look that number up and present the customer details to the agent taking the call. So again, resulting in that overall improved customer experience. And then the third area was the omni-channel area. And again, there's two, uh, two elements to that. There's the internal element and the external element. Obviously, the external one being customers wanting different ways of, of contacting our, our business, our sales agents, our customer service agents, and so on. Um, and the fact that the technology allows that. We're, we're just about to go live with Social Mind, for example, which will then, the plans once we've got that functionality in place, that web chat functionality on our customer facing public websites, is to then try and build an, an element of artificial intelligence there as well, because again of the open source nature of, of Social Miner. And then there's the internal omni-channel element. And what I mean by that is giving our staff as well the, the option to communicate in different ways. And I'm not sure if I'm uh, allowed to mention competitors to Cisco, but we do have we'll them go on. in place. Uh, and what we've done, we've taken an approach, go on then, Charlotte. We've taken an approach where we're really giving our staff, our users, the, 
the option to pick what collaboration tool they want to use. And, uh, and so, for example, that they can, just the same as they would when using a browser, that they have Firefox, Chrome, um, Edge, and so on. Well, why shouldn't it be the same with the collaboration tool if we can get them to work well together? And we were a Skype house beforehand. We are now fully Jabba, and in a majority of cases, I've got to say this, haven't I, but staff do, do choose Jabba over Skype. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is it gives that internal omni-channel experience as well, and they do play well together as technologies. That's really great to hear. I'm also very pleased that you mentioned the open APIs. So our developer community is very active and we work very strongly with those. And um, you know that's across the portfolio and specifically with Cisco Spark, that's emerging as a, a really important differentiator for us. So next I'd like to ask you about the, the people responsible within the business for making the decision. Um, who, had, who else had significant input aside from you and if you work closely with them? And then um, as, the, as the project's rolled out, has your role evolved at all as part of what you've seen and the project you've been part of? Um, Jens, I'll begin with you. Yeah, yeah so we, we see a, a change in that. Um, in, in the past, we did IT projects, which was mainly internal IT projects. So we get a request. We set up an internal project. Only IT people are uh, at the project team. And then we rolled out stuff, and then it w that, that it's done, finished, success. And uh, so mainly um, we, 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 we changed this, and uh, we do now mainly so-called customer projects. Customer, our internal customers are the business divisions. We see them as our customers. And um, we do now mainly projects as customer projects, which means that the business is involved right from the beginning. Um, in the in the, in the right at the planning phase of a of a project, the business is involved and um, takes part of the plannings and is also then a, a part of the project team, and uh, so therefore then uh, the, the business alignment becomes more better and we we, we can easily take care about uh, any request changes from the business and uh, within the project and not seeing at the end oh you missed something. Who would you say were your key key internal stakeholders? Did you have the ultimate kind of responsibility, or? Yeah, at, at the end, each um, uh, project has to be approved by the CIO, of course. But uh, it's a process, so um, there's a, a approval process where um, in the stakeholders, the business is involved, we as a, as, a, as a project management, and of course then the CIO. Thank you, Kim. Sure. So. Um, we went through an RFP process. We ensured board level involvement with that RFP process right from the outset. And that even involved you know, senior directors attending um, demo days at, at various EBCs and, and so on to really be immersed into the technology and really sort of almost make sure that they had that wake up call in, in terms of letting them know what's out there now and that the, the significant improvements we could make as a, a business by adopting newer technologies. Um, the project uh, was very much, the, the, the focus from day one was let's get core functionality in um, and then focus on, on almost a, a program of continuous improvement. So in answer to the question about is your role evolving, um, very much so, uh, but that's intentional. And um, you know, this year, for example, literally in the last couple of weeks, we've set up a new steering group, a 2018 steering group. And the, the entire purpose of that steering group is to look at what we've done today, but then look at how we continue to get uh, maximized value that we're, we're getting from the technology, the collaboration technology that we've implemented. It's good to hear your role evolve. Change is healthy, which is good. And exactly. also, I think one, one thing I love about Radius is your CEO, who's also the founder of the company, is, is, he's, he's really actively involved, isn't he? He's extremely actively involved. Um, you know, he, he met with Cisco, who was involved in all of the demos. He met with our partner as well. And, yeah, he, he was ultimately responsible for the, the decision as to, to who we went with, but by having him involved from that, that very early sort of stage of the process, it, it, it made it a, a much more um, manageable process. Franz. In Signa we have... Hoppala? Hello? In Signa we have a culture that we have the ability to, to test something, so we... We build use cases, then we make some prototypes and we go out to our customers. And if we fail, we stop it and go on with the next. This is one of the things that we do at Signa. Um, the next thing is, the, we, we 
we turn around the, the how we look out to your use cases and often we say can we speed up our business sell can we speed up the sell process uh, from our flats from our office buildings or can we speed up some due diligences and if we in this real estate business speed up something these are millions so the investment is so small for unified communications but the speed brings us millions so in the sea level discussions there's no discussion for uh, how much cost the uh, spark integration the discussion is can we speed up the the delivery process from our office buildings i love that you've mentioned speed actually because one of my yeah. favorite quotes ever <laughs> from one of our recent videos is that um one of your members says right. faster than the email the writers, writers which right. is just such a great quote and right. you really feel that that's true that's a fact yeah fantastic daniel so yeah, we, it's a similar, similar story to Tim's, I guess. We, we went for a full transformational program um, throughout the whole IMT and t function. And obviously one of those strands was network and communications. So obviously we went through the, the normal governance that a, a program, transformation program would have. I guess the ultimate decision was with the CIO, of course, but you know, we all fed into that. Um, has my role become Busier, yes. I think we're kind of almost the victim of our own success. Um, the more the business sees of the technology, the more we roll out. The telepresence, the contact center, Jabber, you know, mobile remote access, Jabber on smartphones, all these great things, the more they want to consume. So we're kind of just, our challenge, I guess, is, is keeping up with the demand and customizing those services to really deliver value, true business value. Thank you. And so I think to close, the question that I always like to ask, and I think I'll, I'll start with Daniel and work down, is just to, if each of you could give one piece of advice that you've learned from, you know, if I knew that at the start, and it, it might have changed things at the end. So is there one piece of advice that you would give to anyone here who's looking to deploy collaboration today? Um, yeah, I think user adoption is absolutely key. It's very, very easily oversighted. And a lot of people miss it. They think, you know, we'll come back to that. I think if you get those that bit right first time, then you know this whole process becomes a lot easier. Tim. Yeah, sure. So I think the the one piece of advice I'd give is don't be afraid. And I think to some extent we were at the beginning of the project because there were so many unknowns. It was such a big change for the business, so on and so on. But in actual fact, sort of. 15 months on, when we look at where we are, we, we've achieved a lot and we've made some really positive changes. And it's easy to say in hindsight, but of course it is me giving that advice now as to where we are today. And that advice is, yeah, don't be afraid of making some big technology changes. Jens. <coughs> yeah, it um, goes uh, along with uh, Daniel. So I, I think the key message is that uh, a technical rollout will no, no longer work in the future, only a technical rollout. It uh, every time has to go along with a, a fitting um, a user adoption program. And finally, Franz. Okay. Have a vision, user adoption, and don't use only experts for implementation, use experts and normal people. There's some really great advice in there, so remember those. Well, I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you for your fantastic insights. It's been I've learned a lot. I hope you have as part of the audience. And enjoy the rest of your afternoon and the rest of your Cisco Live. Thank you.